What will my people think? Surely this must be a dream. Why just a few days ago I saw the United States for the first time. Winging into New York City via Varig Airlines with a bevy of international beauties headed for the 1965 Miss Universe pageant. And on to Miami aboard Eastern Airlines 727 jets, where an eager press and public extend a hearty greeting, and local pageant hostesses warmly welcome their girls. Official Catalina swimsuits in sunny pink, turquoise, and jade green make a big hit with the delegates. And the hostess chaperones help to orient the girls to the facilities at Miami Beach Convention Hall. The forehead spot Miss India features means that she is a highly fashionable young lady. Smiling for her official photograph, Miss Sweden reflects a radiant natural beauty. This is Miami's Crandon Park Beach, where hundreds of local well-wishers as well as amateur and professional photographers turn out the snap candids of the senoritas, froyleins, and mamzelles. For the next event, they'll be wearing Prestolite helmets and demonstrating their good sportsmanship by joining in the Miss Universe miniature Prestolite Grand Prix race. The girls love the miniature cars, the merry-go-round, and all the rides and games in Crandon Park, which many of them had never seen before. After dark, throngs of people of every nationality line Biscayne Boulevard for the Parade of Friendship, officially opening the pageant. Members of Miami's Norwegian-American colony show up en masse to welcome the Scandinavian delegation, and jovial folks of Spanish extraction give a cheering reception to their favorites. Public spirit rides high whenever the Miss Universe delegates appear in the many community-sponsored events. Accustomed to playing the gracious host, South Floridians open their hearts completely to these dazzling continental beauties. At Miami's Bayfront Park Band Show, it's standing room only. The Miss Universe delegates on parade appear resplendent in original costumes, bearing gifts germane to their individual countries, as is this delicately carved ivory presented to Miami Beach Mayor Elliot Roosevelt. One of the highlights of the Miami social scene is the annual Miss Universe Fashion Show Luncheon, where almost 1,000 well-attired women, and more than a few gentlemen, applaud the poised and graceful Miss Universe models. They wear Ole Cassinis and Seal Chapmans and appear absolutely stunning on the runway. Sponsored by the Women's Cancer Association of the University of Miami, this is another sellout community affair. In the elegant Pompeii room of the Eden Rock Hotel, Royal Crown Cola hosts a gala press party, where the celestial beauties have a chance to meet pageant officials, world famous photographers, and international journalists, all here specifically to cover this great pageant for news media all over the globe. Now, the Golden Globe itself sparkles on stage as the big sisters escort their country's Little Miss Universe candidates for final judging. Little Miss Costa Rica is chosen second runner-up, Little Miss Cuba becomes first runner-up, and Miss USA, Sharon Raggianti of Memphis, Tennessee, is named the new Little Miss Universe. Then the big girls take over the stage to participate in the Parade of Nations, one of the most colorful sights in the world, evoking a thrilling burst of applause from the packed house. Royal Crown President W.E. Ozzo presents the Best Native Costume Award to Miss USA. And Miss Photogenic Award goes to vivacious Karen Schmidt, Miss Austria. As the evening gown competition swings along, reporters and audience alike buzz excitedly about the lavish gowns worn by the beauty delegates, many of the creations of top designers from the world's renowned fashion houses. Corresponding with the symbolic crimson-covered ramps is the pageant's red carpet treatment of the international delegates. Each girl is made to feel as much like a queen as possible. The executive hostesses spend about six months a year organizing a team of local all-volunteer multilingual chaperones who are with the girls 24 hours a day from arrival to departure, tending to their safety, comfort, and pleasure. <laughs> 
The hostesses say that friendships formed in this United Nations family are really lasting, and that they receive notes of thanks from parents all over the world. The judges have chosen, and here are the 15 fabulous semi-finalists. And what a heterogeneous group they are. One is five foot four, six are five five to five seven, and eight girls are five foot eight or over. There are seven blondes, five brunettes, four with black hair, one chestnut, and one redhead. Each girl has survived countless judgings at every level in her homeland, and now she is one of the 15 most beautiful girls in the universe. Several girls are so thrilled and excited they can hardly stand still enough to be photographed. Next, the semi-finalists meet the judges. Earl Wilson, syndicated columnist for the New York Post. Gregory D. Leventis, first director of the Greek National Tourist Office in New York. Richard Dinsdale, noted editor of the London Sun. Felipe Halsman, named one of the 10 best photographers in the world. Miss Gladys Zender, high fashion model and former Miss Peru, who became Miss Universe in 1957. Don Kingman, outstanding watercolor master, now working with Hollywood producers. Roberto de Mendoza, dean of the Latin American Diplomatic Corps. Kazushige Hirasawa, editor-in-chief of the Japan Times. Dr. Edsil Cid Varela from Rio, director of TV Brasilia. Relaxation and good fun are also on the schedule. Local residents and celebrities go all out to host the girls at pool and patio parties where they're joined by fascinated Floridians. Throughout the week, the girls with their chaperones are entertained and dined in the area's top clubs and restaurants. Between the wonderful weather in the Sunshine State and the deluxe treatment the girls receive, it's no wonder they would like to return to Florida someday. Hotel accommodations are among the finest in the country. Official pageant host hotels include the Algiers, the famous Roni Plaza, the Shelburne, and the Monte Carlo. Dress rehearsal discloses a brilliant innovation with Miss Hong Kong performing an ancient sword dance, enchanting to her colleagues as it is to the audience out front. Miss Tunisia calls this the dance of no name, but she certainly does it with authority. This Highland fling didn't originate in the Highlands. Modern Miss Scotland had to learn it from the pageant's dance directors. And to complete the continental folk dance segment, here's a good old-fashioned Mexican hat dance. Thousands jam Miami Beach Convention Hall to view the spectacular show and to see the most beautiful girl in the universe receive her crown. The giant stage shimmers with the optimum in feminine beauty before a glistening backdrop of dancing waters. Beauty delegates from 58 countries, representing every continent on the globe, sing joyfully, hello, how do you do? A big hello to all of you. And the response from the audience is a tremendous ovation. An atmosphere of universal affection and friendship pervades the huge hall, as though, by their presence here, these radiant young women from all the world have demonstrated the compelling reasons for understanding peace and progress among the nations of the world. The highly cherished Miss Amity Friendship Award goes to lovely Ingrid Bechka from Germany. Hosting the TV show viewed by over 60 million people are John Daly and Sally Ann House. In addition to exceptional beauty of face and figure, these cosmopolitan candidates show singular intelligence and a strong penchant for knowledge. Over half speak as many as five languages. At present, 30% are students. Over 50% will have or have had a university or higher education. Several model professionally, others being secretaries, teachers, ballet dancers, airline hostesses, one travel agent, a machinist, and one girl listing soldier. Life ambitions include show business, social work, travel, careers in law and medicine, teaching and writing, plus being good wives and raising happy families. On the hobby list, 90% stressed reading, followed by outdoor sports, cooking, sewing, dancing, art, and studying languages. In the choice of great men, the Pope, 
and the United States president leave. Then the astronauts and one girl who said, you thought for the world, for me, Walt Disney. As the curtain opens on the Salon of International Beauty, the girls walk through the flower-covered trellises to be introduced. First, from Australia, Pauline Vieri. From Brazil, Maria de Andrada. From Canada, Carol Ann Tidy. From Finland, Virpi Mietti. From Colombia, Maria Victoria Ocampo. From Denmark, Jeanette Christensen. From Greece, Aspa Theologito. From Holland, Agnes Kalt. From Israel, Alisa Sadi. From Peru, Frida Holler Figalo. From Sweden, Ingrid Norman. From the Philippines, Luis Vale Aurelio. From South Africa, Veronica Priga. From Thailand, the Pasara Hongsakula. From the United States of America, Sue Ann Downey. And now, the 15 dwindled to just five finalists. Miss Finland. Miss Holland. Miss Sweden. Miss Thailand. Miss USA. While the judges complete their ballots, striking dark-eyed Karina Tsofe from Greece, the reigning Miss Universe 1964 takes her last traditional walk on the runway. And now for the winners. Fourth runner-up, the delegate from Holland, Anya Scout, receives her trophy and roses from Titian-haired Virginia Lee Crater, Miss Hospitality for the pageant. Now the third runner-up, the delegate from Sweden, Ingrid Norman. Ingrid speaks four languages and her ambition is to travel and learn many more. And the second runner-up, Sue Ann Downey of the United States of America. Sue Ann said she would be happy just to be in the top five. But look here. It's clear Miss Thailand expected her to be the winner. Suddenly, she is aware that only she and Finland remain. And the first runner-up, Virpi Vietzinen from Finland is announced. And now, the full realization that she, a Pasara Hongsakula from Thailand, is now the reigning beauty of the universe. Pasada Hongsitu, a five foot four inch raven haired, dark eyed, 18 year old graduate of a convent school. Her native nickname is Poop, which in Thai means fat, a misnomer now, as the number two daughter of a colonel in the Royal Thai Air Force becomes Miss Universe 1965. Yes, it is true. Here I am, a girl from far away Thailand. And now I am Miss Universe, and all the people of Thailand will be proud. With the title goes $10,000 in cash, the golden Miss Universe trophy, a $10,000 personal appearance contract, a full-length mink coat, a $10,000 original wardrobe, and many more gifts. In her first official appearance, a Pasara Hong Sakula reigns over the Miss Universe Coronation Ball the most impressive event of South Florida's social season. Then begins a year of travel to the four corners of the earth to further the cause of peace, understanding and goodwill among all the peoples of the universe.